Hello, welcome to Time Lord TV once again. I'm the Time Lord, as many of you know. What I'm doing today is just recording an extended video on how to use one of these and how to film yourself or clients, etc., etc., and how to use a smartphone. Now, I was out filming in public the other day, and it's inevitable whenever you get a camera, people are going to approach you and I was approached by several people. But sure enough, I was approached by one guy who said, sir, 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 that's beautiful video, beautiful equipment. What sh camera should I get for vlogging and blogging? Uh, what's the best camera, he asked me. And I was very busy and so on. And I said, well, sir, the thing is to get a smartphone. And he said, which smartphone? He said, what's a good one? You see, asking what's a good camera is the same as saying, what's a good oven? What goes into the preparation of food, that's what matters, and it's all the preparation, and then it's the knowledge. You know, you can, get, you can see in a recipe, cook until golden brown or something like that. Well, how do you judge that? That's experience. That's knowledge that you earn and you work at and you gain as you go through life as a photographer, as a videographer, whatever you do your experience counts for a lot. And so in photography and in video, there is no such thing as a good camera. I go out with vintage film cameras and I can take great photos, but I grew up with film and I have 12 shots and I have to decide, is that the shot, this, that and the other? And it improves my photography every time I go out because you're not relying upon digital, you know, multiple, 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 and then choosing the shot. There are even cameras now, video cameras, and I'm using some now, whereby it captures a frame. And some makes of cameras capture those frames as a JPEG, and so you can go through and you've got an image, you know. But that isn't how I work, and that isn't how any half-decent photographer works. So the answer is, any camera is a good camera any camera, film, digital, doesn't matter. It depends upon your knowledge and your abilities as to what makes the end result. It's been said often, a good camera is the camera that you have on you at the time of taking that photograph. And I agree with that statement. So that's the first thing to learn in the first part of this video. There is no such thing as a good camera. Right, so following on from that, what's a good camera, it's interesting to note that some films have gained Oscars, and there was one famous one a few years ago, where they ran out of money, so they filmed the rest of the film, it was a short, on I think five or six iPhones, um, iPhone five or six, I think it was, and they won an Oscar for that short movie. So moving on to then smartphones, which ones and so on, which ones to use and how to use it more actually. I use the OnePlus 9, I have used the iPhone as well, iPhone 12, 11, 10, 9 and so on going back. But basically I use a OnePlus 9. Now and on this phone and a lot of phones, you, you've got the option of settings on um, the later phones, the later models, you've got settings. So what I would recommend to you is with your phone, first of all, set the frames per second as high as possible. Uh, some older phones are only 30 frames or 25 frames, but try and get a phone where you can get it to 50 or 60 frames a second. The reason for that is that if you film at that rate, you can then reduce it down for slow motion as well, which is quite a useful, quite a nice effect at times. So that's the first setting, set them as high as possible. 
Then set your phone setting at 4K if it's got that option or as high a resolution as possible. I'm not going to go into what is 4K on a smartphone versus the uh, cameras, the Blackmagic cameras I'm using today, you know, the sensor sizes, etc., etc. Just because your phone says it's 4K, that does not mean that the quality coming out of your phone is as good as the cameras that I'm using and I'm shooting at 4 or 6K. Today I'm shooting at 6K on Blackmagic's. But basically, 4K, set it as high as possible. Then you might have something like the aperture as a setting as well. Now, the aperture is where a diaphragm opened up and closed, and it's the amount of light setting in. And some very basic stuff on the aperture. The lower the number on the aperture, the uh, shallower the depth of field. That means that if you're on something like an f2.8, f4, the amount that will be in focus will be shallower, so from the nose to the back of the head, say. On f2.8, it might be even less than that. If you go up to a higher number, like f11, f8, f15, 16, 22, then the depth of field, what's called the depth of field, actually gets longer. So if you go up to the higher apertures, I think these are shooting on F8, so there'll be quite a bit in front of me, a bit in front of me and a bit behind me, which actually will be in focus. Um, and if you go really high and you have this capability on your phone, F16, 18, 22, then the whole of the background will become in focus. And that is the amount of light coming into the lens through the diaphragm. However, I recommend shooting, on average, if you have this as an option, around f8 for most videos. If you have aperture as an option, if you don't, you can skip over that. But then you may need to increase what's called the ISO, the amount of light. It used to be called the ASA. It's how quickly a film reacted to light. You might need to increase the ISO as you reduce um, the aperture, as you make the whole um, smaller in effect. So on a smartphone, first of all, set it 50 to 60 frames a second, set it as high resolution as possible or higher format as possible, 4K I recommend, and then also set your aperture if you have that option, and then set the ISO if you have that option. Or you may be using software that gives you that option as well. Okay, so light. Because it might rain, I'm actually under a shelter at a hotel, the Hogsback Hotel down in Hampshire. I'm photographing an event later on today. So I'm in a sort of bandstand type uh, situation here. So there's, not, there's quite a bit of shadow coming on my face. So it's not ideal and I never bought any portable lights. Um, and it's quite bright behind me. And ideally I would like some light to light up the face. So the problem you're going to get here where even if you use your aperture and your ISO and so on, is you're going to get a blown out sky. So the sky is going to have to be brighter and brighter and brighter. And you, it can be what's called blown out whiter and whiter and whiter in order to see my face and for the face to be lit properly. So hands up, I didn't bring, I've got enough stuff on me. I didn't bring any portable battery lights. So that is one thing you might want to think about as well. There are all sorts of lights, uh, lighting settings, and I'm not going to go into them now, you know, Rembrandt light, um, long light, short light, etc, etc. Um, I'll leave that for the experts and so on. All you need to worry about is if you're in this situation where you've got a bright window or a bright light behind you brighter, then basically you need to have ideally a portable light, battery driven, so you can do it outside um, that will light up the face. OK, I haven't got that today. And you'll see uh, the problems that you might have within this video as a demonstration. I'd like to say I planned it, but I hadn't. I just didn't have any lights. I didn't bring them with me. OK, so that's light. Make sure that you're in a position. And if you're inside, then 
um, face the window and get the window light falling on it because man-made lights are still not as good ga uh, f a ball of, uh, of gas, flaming ball of gas in the sky that we call the sun. It takes eight minutes, roughly eight minutes for that light to get here. But basically man-made lights and lights you'll find in hotels, in offices and so on, they can be fluorescent, they can be tungsten, uh, they can be all sorts and they can give a yellow pallor over somebody. So sometimes it is best to have your own white light um, portable light with you. Okay, so I would recommend investing just in a couple of lights on tripods. Okay, so if you're using a smartphone, how do you set it up? How do you hold it? Well, first of all, you can use a tripod. So you can buy some fairly inexpensive tripods, three-legged tripods and so on, um, that you can set your smartphone into. And I would recommend a variety of tripods, check them out, the ratings, etc. Or alternatively, if you're doing it, you know, walking along, you can have a gimbal in front of you. There are loads of gimbals available. Again, I'll put down some that I've used or quite like uh, and so on, tripods and gimbals. However, if you're caught short and you haven't got anything and you're filming a client testimonial or you're out in the countryside and you're filming, the first thing with a smartphone is please stop taking photographs like that with it upright. Please, 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 and video, please start taking it like that. Because if you think about it, you want this video, you want your photograph to be ready for a website or ready for social media. That does not work on social media except for Insta. That can work on Insta. That works on Facebook, it works on your website, it works on LinkedIn. So horizontal landscape, please. That will work better in the majority. And if you're filming and taking photographs like this, and you're gonna also put it on Insta as well, make sure that your client testimonial is in the center of the uh, frame, so that when you put it on Insta, you've got the person in the center, not to one side or the other. Or if it's countryside or whatever, make sure that what you're filming, your main focal point, is in the center or factory or product, whatever it might be. Make sure it's in the center if you're gonna put it on Insta as well. But for other media, like Facebook, LinkedIn, website, etc., generally speaking, you're gonna get the right shot if it's landscape, okay. But if you call it short and you haven't got a gimbal, you haven't got a tripod and you just wanna do some, you've seen something out the car, make for a good storyline or whatever, and you wanna uh, video it, um, then basically this is what you do. You hold it like that, make sure you're not covering the lens, obviously. You tuck this elbow, if you're left hand, do it the other way. But you tuck your elbow into your body as firm as possible. You then grab around the wrist with the other hand. You then tuck that into your body you, and you grab as, and then you have a gimbal. And you have a steady cam gimbal when you do that. Okay, it's not my tip, it's a tip given by Neil Ben, a great guy who teaches people how to use smartphones as well. So basically, that's what you can do if you're out filming and you want to do a, a client video testimonial or some countryside or whatever, you can actually quite easily, or you're at an exhibition or a show, or you've got a trade stand, anything like that, and you haven't got your gimbal on you or tripod, you can actually form a human gimbal like that. Okay. So that's what you can do with a smartphone. Okay, so the next subject I wanna cover is sound. It is essential on a video that you get a decent sound and record a decent sound. 
I'm using, with this setup I've got, um, a Lavalier mic, you know, wireless mic, which then goes to one of the cameras, and the other camera is set to record on the microphones on the camera, and that means I can join them together when I'm editing and switch from one camera to the other camera quite easily in the edit process. Okay, so that's what I'd recommend on that, that you get a microphone for your smartphone. Now, a lot of smartphones these days, including this one and the iPhone, don't have a socket, a jack socket, a mini jack. So you have to find a way of doing that. And rather than me telling you which ones to get, you need to research for your phone one that will work via Bluetooth. And there are many, many out there. Now, I haven't used one for a while, and you might need to get an adapter as well. So you need to look at that, and you need to do a bit of research for yourself, for your own phone, because there are so many that do work with some phones and don't work with others. And if I recommended one, I'm then gonna get complaints saying, you recommended this, I spent this money, and basically it doesn't work with my phone. It might not work with your phone, whatever I recommend. Some do, some don't. There doesn't seem to be a universal. So basically, you need to get a decent um, microphone. Alternatively, you can get Bluetooth uh, reporter mics, handheld, which are also quite good. I've used those as well. And they can have a Bluetooth adapter. So basically, research the market, but please get a decent microphone. Okay, another important thing with videos is music. Don't please just nick music tracks, commercial tracks, your favorite rock band or boy band or whatever, and use that track. Two reasons. First of all, it's stealing, it's copyright. Somebody has taken the time to put that track together and it's copyrighted to them or the publishing company, the record company, the recording company, the studio, the artist, whatever. There are multiple people involved. And people make a money from this. OK, and some people are really struggling to make money in the arts. Forget the well-known rock stars, pop stars, X Factor, etc. Most people, musicians, singer songwriters struggle to get heard, struggle to get recognized. So just nicking their track is not on. It's illegal. Secondly, if you do that and you publish your video on social media or YouTube, then it may get taken down either by the um, social media channel or YouTube itself and it might block it um, because they can recognize copyrighted material or alternatively you're going to get a cease and desist letter from the artist, the recording artist. So expect that. There are many, many, many royalty free tracks and I'm going to list these um, available, royalty free tracks available and I'm going to list these in the video below. But music needs to reflect your brand. It needs to reflect your product, your service. It needs to not be your favorite song, your favorite style of music. It needs to be something that appeals to your demographic. For example, if you are a wealth advisor and you want to get um, perhaps older people who are retiring or in retirement and advise them on wealth, long-term care, pensions, investments, etc. You probably don't want to release the latest um, number one in the charts. Okay, You might want to actually go back a bit in time to some more classics in the 70s, 80s, or even classical music as well, or jazz or blues. I'll leave it up to you. But you need to think about your demographic, not what you like, but what your demographic might like. But then it also needs to reflect your brand and what you're offering, your brand offering. So think about music very carefully. Make sure it's copyrighted to you or buy some royalty free um, music. OK, so that's music. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so you've got your smartphone, you know how to use it, you know how to set it up and all the rest of it. Stories. We all love a good story. So, start thinking about stories that you can tell. And the sort of stories that work well in the social media space, because don't forget you're competing with cats falling off a TV, kids falling over, whatever it might be on social media and social media channels, even on LinkedIn. Um, so basically your story needs to have a message that stands out. It might be a story about problems that you've had in working with a client, but you've overcome. Tell that story. It might be you're a manufacturing plant. Tell the story of your manufacturing plant, the process of that product. It might be that you are arranging pensions and wealth investment and things like that. Then tell the story about investment crashes and stock market crashes and why people can, why you can help people withstand the storm of things like that. So stories, get hold of stories and think of stories, be imaginative and create videos around stories. They make for great videos that are watched. Okay, so on top of stories, what I tend to do when I'm going out to do a video for a client, I will prepare a storyboard. I'll put in the links again below the software that I use. It's called story, uh, Studio Binder. And you can map out a storyboard, a script, a storyboard. You can have um, calling sheets, call sheets, you can have on that the nearest hospital, things like that. You can have all the shots you're going to take and things like that. You can make it as complex or as simple as you wish. And Studio Binder is a really, really good tool. Because then when you go out and you're making your video, say you've got a manufacturing plant and you want to highlight that with a video, then it's no good just rocking up and sort of doing the video and hoping that you get it in the can, as it were, within a short period of time. Sit down and plan it and map out your script, even if it's unspoken, and your storyboard, and then think about the shots that you want to achieve within that uh, video. Okay, and this can apply to pension investments, accountants, service industry solicitors, architects, and so on. You can map out the story that you want to achieve for your hero video for your website. It's a really important that you do that and not just go at it and think, I'm going to get a great result because it's all up here. Map it out on paper, either using Studio Binder or literally a blank sheet of A4.